soon and very soon. And I say amen. Let's go. All of us together. Amen. Nobody left behind. All of us go together. Amen. Let's get ready to worship the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight for your goodness, for your mercy truly endures forever. Thank you for bringing folks in. We thank you for those who are watching online. Lord, bless them where they are. Keep them, heal them, deliver them, win them where they are. But Father, bless these people tonight. Let your spirit flow. We ask for the anointing of the Lord. But right now, just lift up your hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you tonight. We worship your blessed Son. We worship you. Heal the people tonight. Give us your wisdom. Implant your word within us. Water us, Father. Feed us. And we give you all the praise for everything that takes place. May your servant speak tonight as the oracle of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. Give him a good praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship Jesus tonight. Amen. Lost his shame, could not get past my blame until he called my name. I'm so glad he changed me. Darkness held me down, and just pulled me out. I'm no longer bound. I'm so glad he changed me. See, I'm now a new creation in Christ. The old has gone.
place my crown at your feet I will worship you I will worship you my I will worship you on bended knees the Lord. What a beautiful song. I tell you, there's a wonderful presence of God. And if your expectation is on, you're going to receive something of the Lord tonight. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? I believe it with you. Amen. You all so pretty. You all know that? That was my brother. You know where all the talent and looks went. That's not fair. But I like my shoes better. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is so good to see you. And those of all who are watching, we're so grateful to you for being here. We're so very glad, very happy always to have Brother Jesse and, and, and the special, special Sister Kathy. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you. You know, there are times in our lives, there are people who influence us and bless us and help us and point us in the right direction. And, and we feed, even from a distance, we, we, we hear the words that, that God gives them to say and the anointing. How many of you can identify? Even though you've never met somebody, their words, their sayings, they bless you. They help make you sharp and strengthen you. These two gentlemen right here, one's my natural father as well, but these are the, the only two spiritual fathers that I have left. The others are in heaven. And those are people that really have a great influence on you. And Sister Kathy, of course, is such a great influence in the body of Christ as well. And so we lo I love him dearly. Uh, in, the, in the hardest times of our lives, in, in our family, uh, we would get a call. And I got a, would get a call from Brother Jesse. He'd pray with us. And that's a very special thing. And I just like knowing him. I, I, you know, I, I don't want to, I'm not just trying to put out nice things. I don't want anything from him. As I've said, I just like knowing him. It's just fun to know him. But we're so glad to have him with us. It's been a long time, many, many years now. He is such a dear friend and a wonderful mentor and, and a blessing. Would you stand with me and give the Lord Jesus Christ and a wonderful servant of the Lord a good hand as he comes to bless us. Praise the Lord. Thank you, John. Hallelujah, Lord. Give the Lord a big God bless you. Come on. In the Lord, wonderful. Praise God. I think I, I think I got your Bible, uh, <laughs> Denny. Maybe the Lord wants me to have it. It's got good stuff in it. <laughs> it's got good stuff in it. Hallelujah. You can be seated for just a minute. Give that brother a good hang You did a good job, brother. I tell you what, that was a great song. <laughs> what a blessing of the Lord. Oh, you know, just let's, let's just lift our hands up and praise for a minute. Can we do that? Just, just thank the Lord. You that can pray in the Holy Ghost, would you do that? Just pray in the Holy Ghost for just a minute. Just let his uh, presence just bless us. I think I'm going to come down where you are there for a second. Come on, just keep praising him. You know, John said it, the healing power of God is here. And come on, just keep praying. Pray with your head up and your eyes open. Bible said, watch and pray. Yeah, you can watch and pray. Come on, pray with me. Just let the Holy Ghost just flow. Minister greatly, Lord Jesus. Come on, just thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, boys. This, follow, one of y'all follow me down this. Hand. Come on, keep praying. Hallelujah. Gee, how you doing, brother? Come on, just thank the Lord. Hallelujah. How you doing? Don't look like you're doing too good. I didn't think so. That's what the Lord said, you see. Well, we can start a new day today. I would never lie to you. Neither would God. A lot of other people have. And all God wants to do is help you. You tried everything and else it didn't. I don't know who you are, but I, I know what I'm saying through the Holy Ghost. You tried everything else and it don't work. So let's give God a shot. Now, and you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm not talking. 
I'm not talking about religion. Religion didn't help nobody. Jesus didn't come to produce Christianity. Man did that. Jesus came that you might know the Father. So stand up. Stand right there. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. And who are you? I'm Sue. My name's Mr. Ray Brennan. This is, this is my man. This is your man. This is my blessing from God. Yes. I've been okay. waiting for 50 years. Okay, come on. Uh, are uh, uh, you all married or anything? By, by heart, yes. Oh, you living together? Yes. Been Shouldn't together. do that. I know. No, I you. Know. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, you don't. No, you don't. I have to be honest with you. Well, you see, a lot of people, I know that's normal now. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's abnormal in God's eyes. Not that you're bad people. Cause, you know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about that. You but if you, no, 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 I'm doing the talking. Sorry. You know? I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen to me. When this anointing is on me, I'm going to do the talking. Okay. Okay. So you got to understand, if you want things to work, you got to live clean. You got to live right. You love this woman? Yes. You love him? Mm -hmm. My wedding dress is Sign a father. covenant. Yes. Sign a covenant. Yes. To death do you part. Yes. You see what I'm trying to say? Yes. And, uh, you know, I married my wife 52 years ago, and it would be dishonorable if I just lived with her. You see what I'm saying? I know that is normal in the world today, but it's abnormal in God. Yes. Now, I'm going to pray for God to help you. And I'm going to just tell you a little story. I was in Shreveport, Louisiana about 35 years ago. And when I walked up to you, your man, <laughs> this man and his wife, uh, he, he was living with her. And um, he looked at me and he said, boy, God really touched his heart. I said, do you love this man? And the lady said, yes. I said, do you love this woman? Yes. He said, well, Brother Jesse, we're going we, we, we're gonna to still stay in the house, but we're not going to sleep together. He said, I'm going to sleep on the couch, and she can sleep in the bedroom. I said, does the couch have wheels? <laughs> and she said, yes. I said, well, I'm not a gambler, but I bet $100 is going to roll into that bedroom before the end of the night. <laughs> See? And I'm not trying to embarrass you in any way, shape, or form, because I, I want your life to change. Yes, you see? And you want your life to change. So I asked him, I told him, I said, uh, what are you doing this afternoon? He said, nothing. I said, I'll marry you. Then you can knock yourself out and sleep all you want. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So if you want God to do things for you, you got to do it right. Yes. And he's not here to hurt you. And he's not here to beat you up and all that kind of stuff. But what he wants is people just to live it. In other words, he wants you to do her right, and he wants you to do him right. Yes, sir. In other words, you love her, sign the contract. Everything you got belongs to her. Everything she got belongs to you. Now, why would God send me down here? But just to literally tell you that, see. Now, I'm going to lay hands on both of you. So put your hands up. I need to uh, get, uh, uh, give me some people to help me. Thank you, John. Hallelujah. Now, listen. I don't pray prayers to see what the words may splatter. Yes. You're going to do what God tells you to do? Yes. Yeah. So it starts tonight, see. Got to start somewhere. We ain't here to judge nobody. Let me just help you. Jesus hadn't judged nobody. He's not a judge right now. He's a savior. You understand that? He's going to become a judge. He's going to become a judge. But right now, he's a savior. And I want God to help you. And the Lord drew me here. Would you stretch forth your hand to these people? Father, in the name of Jesus, just lift your hand up like that. Oh, Lord Jesus. Touch them, Jesus. Help these people, Lord. Make it right in their lives, Father in every area, spiritually, physically, financially, every part of it, God. Satan, I get great pleasure in telling you, get under these people's feet that what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. We bind you today from trying to destroy these people. And Lord, I speak this right now from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. I want you to pray this prayer with me, Lord Jesus. Say it. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin, iniquity, or trespass. I give my life 100% to you. And from this night forward, we're going to live right, we're going to do right, and we're going to talk right. Father, guide me. Say it. Father, guide me and direct me. I believe with my heart. 
I confess with my mouth, Jesus rose from the dead. I receive you today. And God, I ask you to help me right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Not to live here for you. No. Say that again. Can you, can you have a prayer for, yeah. for my liver? Sure, yeah. You want us all to fix? See, all this, that what we just prayed is a heartfelt confession. So healing is in that. You see? And everything name has to bow name of Jesus. Got to do right by her. Look at me. Got to do right by her. You got to do right by him. The day of the wedding, he, um, I understand. He That's neither here nor there. Yeah. It's got to happen. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yes. That way, and then you get healed on top of your head and so on your feet. So, Father, I thank you that by your stripes, he's healed. I come against hepatitis. I come against anything that destroyed anything in his body. I don't know what it is, but if it's coming and attacking his liver, I bind it. Amen. And I speak Amen. healing in the mighty name of Jesus, and I decree and declare the word of the living God. Yes. They just prayed. Yes. They just prayed. Yes. They repented a prayer. Yes. Repented, prayed a prayer. Yes. Now, Lord, touch yes. this man. Amen. Bless Thank them. You. Help Thank them. You. Let no pain, Amen. nothing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, young men. Give the Lord a hand clap. Thank, Thank you, you sweetheart. God Thank bless. you. You can have a seat right there. Hallelujah. Isn't that a blessing? I'm not, I'm not praying for people right now. I want everybody to just keep praying with me. Where's, my, where's, my, where's the man with the problem with the legs? Where he at? Right here. Okay. Lift your hands up. Give me some people to help me here. Come on. Thank you, brother. I even had a problem with his leg. Lord, I ain't had no problem with my legs. So why should he have a problem with his legs? Do y'all agree with that? See, God don't love me any more than he loves this man. So why would he have problems with his legs and I don't have problems with mine? That's good, brother. I appreciate that. See, it's already working. You see what I'm saying? See, some of y'all went, Burr. no, 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 no. God wants to help people. Father, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, which it encompasses his leg. Jesus, we release healing anointing power that is in my life, in my hands, in his legs. God, whatever's causing this, I rebuke it. I bind it in Jesus' name. I speak healing completely that if he wants to start jogging, he can jog, do whatever he wants to do. Lord, I thank you for it. I believe you for it. I call it done in the name of Jesus. Satan, I get great pleasure in telling you, get under this man's feet. In Jesus' name. I decree and declare it today. All pain, all whatever is gone. And I ain't got any problem with my legs. He ain't going to have no more problem with his. Lord, I release that today. People, lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Lift your hands and receive that. Receive that. Come on, people, keep praying with me. Keep praying with me. Come on, everybody praying in the Holy Ghost. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray in tongues, pray in English, pray whatever you want. Come on, just keep praying. Ooh, the Lord is good. How you doing, Pop? Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. Would you come and stand right here? Yeah, just come right here. <laughs> Lift your hands up. No, 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 no. Yeah! Stay behind him, boys. Jesus, touch him, Lord. Give him all that he desire. Lift in his years. Bless him in every which way, shape, or form. God, I thank you. That I, Lord, you led me to him. Oh, she kid. He said, tell him I've heard him every time he's prayed. Sometimes he wondered because there have been some things that hadn't worked right. But I'll tell you what, you, the rest of your life is going to be a lot better than it was before. <laughs> God, I thank you. Stay behind. Bless him, Lord. Put him on the ground. Oh, somebody shout somebody. Oh, Rabasata. Come on, shout somebody. Oh, Rebbe, let, let, let me pray for you, sweetheart. Come stand right here. Hallelujah. If you came to hear me preach, you may not. I don't know. Lift your hands up. Go bre sele me. Ba me bebe shoko me yele lo ho shoko re. Ho ma shikam re Jesus, thank you, God. Yeah. 
Somebody shout, somebody. Come, hang on to it, brother. Woo, we got a wild one here. Oh! Woo. Now, some of y'all say, I would never do that. You ain't never been touched like that. Oh, come on. Give the Lord a great God bless you. Hallelujah. Rabasata. Thank you. Hey, come on, people. Lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Woo, Jesus. Come on, keep praying with me. Just have to do what the Lord tells us to do. Uh, uh, Pastor John, Pastor Den, I just have to, if that's okay. I'm all about show contact. You haven't forgiven yourself. You did something you thought was super awful years ago. And the devil been beating you on that. Yet you've asked God to forgive you. It ain't nobody's business. So he's not going to reveal it. But Satan been beating you and beating you and beating you about that. How long are you going to allow that? When Jesus said that he didn't cover it, he washed it away. Let, let me tell you what he did. There's a word I want to use. He expunged your record, which means it never existed. It never happened. But you've had guilt come on you, and at times you've wondered. Now, I don't want get out of your seat and come up here. I want to pray for you. you know, but we ain't, God ain't revealing nothing. There'll be more than one. Don't come if you don't have that. You know what I'm talking about. He said, you just let God, yeah, yeah, yeah. come on, we're going to pray, hallelujah. Dear. Now, for you people not, come on, sweetheart, uh, you some, you're not used to Pentecostalism. Uh, if you get nervous, just close your eyes. <laughs> That's all you got to do, close your eyes. Step closer to me. Now, look at me, all of you that have come, look at me. Expunge, which means it never existed. Now, God took 70 parts of Moses' spirit and and put it on 70 elders, man. And Moses still had enough left to whip the devil. So when I'm going to lay hands on it, I'm going to ask you to pull the joy of the Lord that's in my life. I got so much joy, brother, it make people mad. They get angry. A little closer, a little closer. Lift your hands up. And let Jesus be the life that he wants. Come on, I want everybody praying. Pray with me, come on. Stretch forth your hand, just pray. Pray with me. Stay behind him. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Jesus, let the peace of God, the joy of the Lord, wash this from her mind that no longer will this frustrate her. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it be gone forever, forever. Stay behind him. Come on, people, pray with me. Forever. Forever, forever, in Jesus' mighty name of whose I am and who I serve, that these things are over with, over with, over with, in Jesus' name, over with, over with, over with, over with Jesus, over with, over, in Jesus' name, Lord Jesus, I think, just put him on the ground, that's all right, or hold him up, Jesus, thank you, oh Lord, over with. Over in the mighty name of Jesus. Over. Over. Kana masukure. Kama shukure sika. Handala masotrebe. Over with. Finished. Done. Oh, over with. Finished. Done. Jesus' name. Done. And gee, people, come on, keep praying with me. Come on. Keep praying with me. God, I tell you what, man, God doing some stuff here tonight. Andrebe soho. Over with, Lord. Help this lady. Today is a day of freedom. A day of liberty. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus name. Come on, people, keep praying with me. Don't get tired. This is a day of freedom. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Yes! Yes, Lord. 
Chile Masatara Monkoda. People lift your hands up and let the Lord just bless. I'm gonna tell you some psychiatrists and psychologists couldn't. It would take years to do what he's doing right now. And whom the Son is set free is free indeed. He expunged your record. You know what that means? It never happened. It never happened. That's amazing to me that it never happened. Ooh, that would be so calm. In the Lord's, so come on, keep praying with me. Let me go on this other side. Rebe so conre, korebe se tandara. Hallelujah. When you finish praying, you can walk back to your seats. When you finish praying, you're going to be all right. Look at me. You're free. <laughs> Somebody shout, will you? Then go with her. Bring it to the back. You'll be all right. Yeah, you'll be all right. Come on, give the Lord a great God. You're all right. You're free. Feel a lot better right now, don't you? It's a load off. Come on, somebody shout, somebody. Yeah. Woo. Hey, sweetheart, I pray for you. Come here. Lift your hands up. You've held a lot of things inside of you all your life. It's almost unbearable sometimes. You see a lot of things that a lot of people don't know you see. Who you have been persecuted. They said terrible things to hurt you. Even as a small child. Breathe on this lady, Lord. Let the wind of life touch her. God, make things easy for her. Help her today. Let her release these. And let life be so much better. God, I ask you, Lord Jesus. I hear this being, Lord, why things happen to me? Because Satan don't like you because you're dangerous to him. He knows if you get so close to God, he can't handle you. So he's doing everything again to shut you down, but he will not. Jesus! He will not. I will have you do the right thing. And you'll know what I'm talking about in every area of your life. People, lift your hands up and bless the Lord for that. Just lift your hands up right there, sweetheart. Things are going to be fine. You understand? It's about time. It's about time. Come on, people, keep praying with me. Keep praying. Come on. Come on, just keep praying. People get nervous when you walk down and out. They start repenting. Oh, Jesus. Don't let him say, oh, Jesus. Come on, just keep praying with me. Oh. There's a person you totally hate. Oh, you don't just dislike this person. You totally hate them. You want to kill them. You've even plotted to. But you don't want to get caught. We understand that. This person has done some very wrong things. It's not a dislike. It's hate. It's controlling your life. That's why your prayers are not being answered the way you want them to be answered. People keep praying with me. Come on. Yes, yes. The Lord want to help you. He'll get rid of the hate. Yeah, and he'll let you see that person through his eyes. And instead of destruction, something will come upon you. It'll set you free and set that person free. Pray with me, people. Get out of your seat and come up here. God can't help you if you don't come. Nothing to be embarrassed about. There are a lot of people talk and think like that. Come on. Yeah. See, some of y'all didn't think the body was coming. Sweetheart, you'll be all right. You can go ahead and sit down. We're dealing with this lady here. Step forward to me. Come, sir. Some of y'all said, there ain't nobody going to come up there. Oh, yeah. Jesus, thank you. My God, this thing is... Gone beyond her 
Now, God, let the love of God <laughs> touch him. Oh, Jesus, cause him to forget. And let the love of God, the peace of God that passeth all understanding, set him free from this and that individual. And let him get up tomorrow smiling because something has changed tonight. Jesus, I thank you for this man. I thank you for him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. People, lift your hands up and bless the Lord tonight. And you're going to be all right, brother. Thanks. Things are going to change. Thank you. See, I mean, if you could have done it, you'd have done it, but you can't. Because all that the Satan would do would use that to lock you down forever. But watch what God will do. Quickly. All right. Mark my words. I don't lie, and neither does God. Thank People, God. lift your hands up and bless the Lord. Thank Come God. on, thank you, God. Just let it right there. That's fine. Ooh, isn't God good? Come on, keep praying with me for just a minute. Salibo show. Salamandale moho. She gonna be all right now. Help her, brother. Balabahore be sata. Everything gonna be all right. See, people don't realize how much pressure somebody can put on you. You know, people say, well, I wouldn't think like that. Maybe you never had that much pressure. You have no idea what people can do. Well, it makes you want, you get to a point, you get so frustrated yes, sir. that you don't want them on the planet. Right. Oh, and you can be a Christian. Yeah. You want an example? Peter. Peter would curse you and cut you. And he was a disciple of Jesus. Yet God breathed the breath, the wind of life into him. And then God gave him the wind of power, the Holy Ghost. Whew, he was afraid no more. The difference between the Peter of the Gospels and the Peter of the Epistles. That's power, brother. Come on, keep praying with me. Yes, Lord. If you want something from God, because he's in a given mood, stand to your feet. Well, Lord, look like you're going to be busy tonight. <laughs> Lift your hands up and receive it. Holy Ghost is praying for you. He knows how to pray, pray and present this to the Father in the name of Jesus. Lord, whether it be spiritual, physical, financial, or all three, Put angels on assignment, Lord, to go and get these things that these people are standing for. And Lord, let it be done quickly, completely by the end of the year, that they will say, at the end of this year, the great God Jehovah has been good to me. Father, thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, you that can pray in the Holy Ghost, pray right now. You that can pray in English, just pray in English. Say, do you building up your most holy faith? Praying in the Holy Ghost. The Lord's healing someone of that lump in your breast. God's taking care of that. He's taking the fear out too because some of that stuff was in the past in your family, but you're not genetically linked up with them. You're genetically linked up with the Lord Jesus Christ, and he don't have that problem. There's a couple of men here you don't want to be like your father because he was mean. He, the Lord is changing you right now. He's changing you right now. He's changing you right now. The Lord said, keep saying it. He's changing you right now. You won't be like your dad. Because you see, you're a new creation. Old things have passed away. Quit worrying about old things. They don't exist. They've been expunged. Amen. You're a new creation. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Therefore, if anybody be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things, not some things, all things yes, become new. Yes, sir. Receive that right now. Yes. And then watch what God will do spiritually, physically, and financially for you in every area of your life. Lord, I thank you for it. I believe you for it. 
I call it done. I give God a great standing ovation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give him a great God bless you. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> Before you sit down, the Lord told me to tell you, he said, tell this congregation they made me happy tonight. <laughs> because I've been wanting to do a lot of things, and you opened up your heart so he could. How do you explain something like that? I wanted to bless my daughter many years ago. She wouldn't let me. Oh, Dad, you know, you know, let it be someone else. What, what's wrong with me? <laughs> well, you know, I would, you know, you, you, you've always been a but Yeah, but what's wrong with me? Now she's learned, young man. So when I say, what do you want? She says, let the Lord lead you, Daddy. <laughs> and you know what? I like that. Yes, we see, the Father's been wanting to bless us for millenniums. But the church has preached that we shouldn't be like that. Right. That, that might be greed. That's not greed. That's growth. Yeah. See, you're not takers. You're receivers. And that, that's a vast difference between being a taker and being a receiver, see. So you received that tonight. And mark my word, there's going to be a bunch of testimonies. <laughs> yes, Lord. He said, tell him I just dispatched 30 angels to come to this place. 30 of them. I just heard it. I hear the rustling in my spirit. I hear the rustling, the sound of wings. And, they, and they're going to get your stuff. They go, listen to me. They're going to get your stuff. Because you prayed, you believed, you received. I'll show you how, I'll show you how, I know it without a shadow of a doubt. I, I want you to lift your hand up if you can answer this question. How many of you knew I was coming here tonight? How did you know? You couldn't see me, you couldn't hear me, you couldn't touch me, you couldn't smell me. I was not in the rim of your five senses, but you knew I was coming. Well, just as sure as you know I is coming, 30 angels are coming with your stuff. Just as sure as you did tonight. Come on, give the Lord a great God bless you for that. Come on, give him a great God bless you. Woo. <laughs> hey! You may be seated. My God, I just had to move when the Holy Ghost tell you to move, you know. It, was that okay, Pastor Denny? I just, you know, I just flow as the Holy Ghost allows me to flow in the Word. God is so good and gracious. I don't want to hold you long, but if you got a Bible or an iPad or a telephone, whatever you use, I'm going to minister. I'm going to finish what I started last night. And I was in Alabama last night. Quickly come, Joe. Joe, where you coming? Go with me to the book of Luke, chapter 4. That's in the New Testament. But you people that don't read the Bible, <laughs> I'll be reading out of the old King James. Luke, chapter 4. I want to start reading with verse 1. While you're turning to Luke, chapter 4, uh, I brought some new material since I saw you last. I love this book. This is me. I never learned to doubt. I know nothing of doubt. I mark my word, 30 angels are coming. I heard the voice of the Lord and the wind of the wings. God. See, doubt is mental anemia. It's actually a form of atheism. See, when you doubt God's word, you doubt that he exists. Because the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. So his Word and him are exactly the same. And if you doubt this Word, you doubt that he exists. This book will change your life. We can't keep it on the shelf. We have always sold out. It's, just, it's, just, it's, it, it, it's a blessing. Lessons I've learned about the dangers of doubt and the freedom of faith. See, doubt it becomes a habit. And sad to say, it's preached from pulpits every Sunday. I hope you can get this. It's at the back table if you so desire. And then this here, I love this. Uh, I believe I might have offered it last year. It took me 30 years to write it because the Lord wouldn't let me write it. It's about the Christmas story. And I was in the mall walking with Kathy. She said, I'm going to go shop. See, if men walk the mall, women go in the stores. <laughs> Am I right, ladies? Is that how men do that, Joe? And I heard this song. It's the most wonderful time of the year, and the Christmas trees up and the lights, and I just liked all that. 
And the Lord said, you can now go home and write that book. Man, I said, I'll do that. And I, I wrote on the characters that God used to get Jesus on the ground. It's more than a Christmas story. To get Because Jesus, let me tell you, the prophecy would not have come to pass. The prophecy would not have come to pass. You don't put a nine-month pregnant woman on a donkey and go 110 miles. She ain't going to make it. Unless Caesar Augustus tells you to do it. Caesar. Because if you don't, he'll kill you. God used this terrible man called Caesar Augustus. The unconscious obedience of the unbeliever. See, a lot of believers won't do what God said, so God will get an unbeliever who's unconscious about it. And Mary got to Bethlehem because of his decree. He didn't know who Mary was. He's trying to get some more taxes. He just wants some money. Sounds like, sounds like today, doesn't it? Why do we need 85, 87,000 more IRS people? They want to suck money from you. Because they're $30 trillion in debt. They don't care. They'll do whatever they can. God used a man named John the Baptist that most churches wouldn't have. He didn't dress right. He preached hell so hot you smell smoke when you got around him. God took three foreigners, very wealthy men, who went 1,500 miles. 1,500 miles. Went to Jerusalem and asked the rabbis, where is he who is born king of the Jews? Bethlehem is only six miles from Jerusalem. And those three wise men could not get one rabbi to go six miles. Mary. It's not about the virgin birth. It's a 15-year-old girl who is so strong. Because if you got pregnant and you wasn't married, they'd kill you. Even Joseph thought to kill it, and Gabriel had to stop it. It's the characters that God used. This would change your life. It's back there. If you'd like to get that, and then finally, I preach this, and you're going to love this. The two kinds of Christians: the ones you like, and the ones you don't. <laughs> and you just reminded you of the ones you don't. The end of the Bible. I mean, Paul the apostle had a guy named Alexander the coppersmith. He said he'd done much harm. The Lord going to reward him in his day. John had problems, my God, you go read. He said, this guy wants to preempt us. He speaks bad about us all the time. Have you ever heard that before in the church? Have you ever heard that before in the church? Sad, huh? Why would you lend your ears to that? This pulpit belongs to God, and he puts who he wants in it. And I'm pretty sure Moses' boys got pretty mad because they didn't get the top slot. But they didn't do what Joshua did. And God said, Joshua is going to be the man who's going to lead them across. Joshua's sons didn't get the top slot. Just because you're born in it. But sometimes God does use people that are born in it. But it ain't nobody's business who God puts behind his pulpit. I'm preaching better than you shouting. You might be that other kind of Christian. This is a DVD that will shake you to your shoe. I had a preacher... <laughs> From New Orleans, uh, Tex Cathy said, God, tell Jesse, that sermon is something. <laughs> Hope you can get it. It's a DVD. And if you'd like to be on our mailing list, mail list, it's absolutely free. This magazine, uh, a lot of my, my friends tell me, Jesse, you know, people, it's so digital now. You know, this costs $3 million a year to produce and mail. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't throw it away in front of me. Make me mad. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, you're going to stop printing this because they can get it online. You can, you know, is that right, Kathy, digital, get it online? I said, no, because I still like a book. Kathy uses the iPad and I use the book. Both the same, it's just what you like. But I like something in my hand. It's absolutely free to you if you'd like to get it. It's called Voice of the Covenant, Joe's in the back. Avail yourself to the book and resource table if you so desire. And God will richly bless you. We've had a unique service already. We went home right now, man, God moved. Some of y'all were freaking out. I saw, I saw some people say, stop him about halfway, Lord. Don't let him go all the way to the back. <laughs> I want to do a little teaching tonight if I can. What time is it? I don't want to hold you, Lord. Just a little teaching. I'm going to finish what I started last night. Luke 
chapter 4. I'll be reading out the Old King James Version. You may have a different translation. Chapter 4. Jesus, verse 1, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. No, not half full, not feeling full, full. Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. I want to talk about the three temptations of Satan. He's only got three. He's not a faith devil, he's a flesh devil. Any temptation you will get in your life will be one of these three or all these three. So instead of preaching, I want to teach it. Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. So for 40 days, he hadn't put no food in his mouth. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Verse 3, and the devil said, notice Satan wait, waited till he was hungry. He always attacks you when you're at your weakest point. And he appeals to Everybody has some kind of a pride in them. So, and, and pride's bad, but there, are, there is some good pride. And the devil said, verse 3, if thou be the son of God. Now, Denny, he didn't know. Because if is a satanic word, John. He don't know. He's been waiting, trying to find this guy who's going to bust his head and he's going to bruise the heel. He's going to destroy Satan. Killing prophets, he doesn't know. In fact, when Jesus died and the Father wrecked, resurrected him out of hell, you know what Satan said? If we'd have known, we'd have never crucified him. He nailed his own nail in the coffin right there. He did not know. If thou be the Son of God, command that this stone, that it be made bread, because you see, he once was with God, and whatever God said became. Now, Jesus could have turned the whole mountain into a, into a loaf of bread with a log of butter running down the valley. <laughs> he said, if he can do this, that's the son of God. That's, that, that's God. Look what Jesus answered him. saying, it is written, or it's logos. That's an English term. I mean, a Greek term for the word of God. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Now, I don't doubt that his stomach was growling when he said it. You see what I'm saying? So what was his first te- uh, thing? What was his first temptation? Watch this. You never, ever use the word of God for personal advantage. Because you're already advantaged by the word of God. You already have the nine gifts, the nine fruits, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You have 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Therefore, if anybody be in Christ, he's a new creature, new creation. Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. See, you never use the word of God for personal advantage. Never, I hunger. You don't have to turn it. You're already advantaged. By stripes you were healed, but I am sick. I'm not dealing with your am sick, dealing with your were healed. I want you to look at your answer like you're looking at your problem. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't use the word of God for personal advantage. Why? Because I'm already advantaged. I'm going to heaven. Ain't that a kick? <laughs> Glory to God. I personally believe in the rapture. Some don't. I had a man say, I don't believe in the rapture. I said, well, stay here. <laughs> Jesse going out on the first load. Y'all do what y'all want. Jesus, Jesus, he had the power to turn that rock into bread. He said, I'll not use the word of God for personal advantage. Because I'm already advantaged. So it's the same way with me in my life. The Bible says, as he is, so are we. When are we going to believe that? As he is, so are we in this world. Why are you waiting to get to heaven to be blessed when he says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? As it is where? Hmm. In my Father's house are many what? Why aren't, you, why aren't you living in a mansion today? Church won't let you. Church thinks you're greedy. And all you, God wants you to do is just be biblical. Hmm. Jesus answered him, verse 4, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone. Even though I'm hungry and I can do it, I'm going to live by every word of God. He didn't use the word of God for personal advantage. I don't either. Why? Because we're already advantaged. 
See, Jesus did not use the word if. He said, I am. <laughs> Who are you? I am that I am. Before Abraham, I am. Oh, oh, oh. He didn't say, well, before Abraham, I don't know if I am for sure, but I'm going to give it my best shot. No, I am. Watch that. If that's for me, tell him I'm put him on hold. <laughs> first, first temptation. He'll try to get you to use the word of God for personal advantage. This building belongs to me. No, it don't. It belongs to God. He has a lot of houses. People get mad if you got more than one house. You would really be mad at God if you found out how many he got. <laughs> Just in this town. Never use the word of God for personal advantage because you're already advantaged by it. In every which way, shape, and form. He said he'd supply how many need? How many? All. Then why do you ask him for a need? If he said he'd supply. Why don't you tell him what you want? Oh, but just that's greed, no, that's growth. The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not. Is the Lord your shepherd? Is the Lord your shepherd? Is the Lord your shepherd? I know I'm kicking against, I'm kicking over some golden calves right now. Is the Lord your shepherd? You shall not want. So why can't you tell God what you want? That's why you need money. Because you don't know what you want. You know what you need. But you don't know what you want. Because the church will say, my God, if you say that's greed. No, that's growth. You become a person that shall not want. Never the point of would not. I shall not. I never would not want. I shall not want. He's El Shaddai. Not El Chipo. <laughs> hmm. So that number one temptation, never use the word of God for personal advantage. Let's go to... Uh, Verse 5, and the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Watch this. Watch what he's appealing to. Hey, Jesus, I heard you were kingdom-minded. I got a kingdom. It's got money. It's got power. He shows Jesus everything Jesus came for. For God so loved the world. So he saw the United States. He saw the British Empire. He saw the Roman Empire. He saw the Greek Empire. He saw the Macedonian Empire. He saw all these empires. That's what he came for. Go to the world and preach the gospel to how many creatures? Satan showed him what he came for. Watch this. Verse 6. The devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them. The word glory, that means the wealth of them. For that is delivered unto me. Well, who delivered it to him? It wasn't UPS. It wasn't FedEx. It was Adam. Eve. Mm. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. That's the words of Satan. He's not lying there. Oh, here comes that devil word. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be done. In other words, just worship me. We in the desert, ain't nobody going to know. Now, if you go read the Amplified, anybody got an Amplified translation? Look at verse 7. He says, all you got to do is fall down and worship me once. You ain't got to do it again. Just once. See, you didn't have to eat the whole fruit. Just one bite. One bite. All you got to do is do it one time. If thou shalt worship me, once. Just once. Ain't nobody going to know. We'll keep it private. Run it like you want. It's like the Nebuchadnezzar thing. Three Hebrew children. We will not bow down to your idol. This big image. John. Now the thing that's amazing to me, Nebuchadnezzar the king was physically there. Why didn't he tell them to bow down to him? He didn't. He told him to bow down to the image because the image is more powerful than Nebuchadnezzar. That's, it. That's Satan. What they said, we am not, we don't even care how we answer you. I'll kill you. We'll give it your best shot. They did. The guys that tried got killed. 
Nebuchadnezzar comes in front and he said, I thought we threw th three and there's a, there's, one, there's a fourth one. He looked like the son of God. Everybody's sweating like a Missouri mule and they got air conditioning in the furnace. <laughs> what was them boys' name? My shack, your shack, and a bungalow. He was having a good time. <laughs> if thou, verse 7, if thou will worship me just once, all shall be thine. All, all of it. Here's the, here's the temptation. Never, everybody say never. Never associate yourself with wicked people, Amen. even for the attainment of a good end, even for what you believe in for. Right. Satan said, I will not, I mean, J Jesus said, I will not partner with you, even though you got all this, even though I'm kingdom minded, even though my father created the whole planet, I will not partner with you. I will not associate myself with you. And I've had people ask me all the time, that's the second temptation. Number one, never use the word of God for personal advantage because you're already advantaged by the word. Number two, never associate yourself with wicked people even for the attainment of a good end. Every temptation that will happen to you in the past, present, or future, it'll be one of those three or all three of them mixed up in there. Now hold your place right there and go to Psalms chapter one. I'm kind of teaching tonight a little bit. Psalm chapter 1. Let me show you why you don't believe in, I don't associate with wicked people. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man. Well, blessed means empowered to prosper. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. What? I don't receive counsel from ungodly people. Even if they go to church. Ah, uh -uh. I want to be blessed, didn't it? Spiritually, physically, financially. I will not associate. Ah, uh -uh. you do what you want to do. That's your second temptation. Oh, Lord, look at that. And all you got to do is do it once. Hmm. Look what Jesus said in verse 8. Get thee behind me, Satan. Do you have the guts to tell the devil to get behind you? <laughs> get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. That's Logos, that's the word. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thy serve. In other words, that includes you too, boy. See, God did not create Satan. God created Lucifer, a good angel, a cherub who walked in the stones of fire. Lucifer created Satan. First thing he did is get one-third of the innumerable angels to fall with him. What he, he got them some point. They associated with his evilness. <sighs> Turn from angelic beings to devils and demons and everything else you could think of. Jesus, Jesus said, I worship God and only him shall I. And what way? He ain't, he's hungry? I don't doubt. He said, look at these kingdoms that I could have. Verse 9, he brought him to a Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be, there we go with that if again, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from hence. Watch this, now he quotes the word, for it is written. <laughs> how did he know how to quote the word? I'm going to show you that in a minute. Satan is now quoting the Bible, quoting the word. For it is written, he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus answering and said unto him, watch what Jesus said. It is said, he goes from Logos to Ramah. To the written word, now to the spoken word. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. How did the devil know how to quote scripture? Go with me to the book of Revelation. That's the last book of the Bible. It's a great book. Do you know if you read it, you're blessed? Chapter 1, verse 3, blessed he that read it and they that hear the words of this prophet. He ain't got to understand it, he just got to read it. And keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. How did the devil know how to quote scripture? Go with me to Revelation chapter 2. <laughs> And I want you to see this. 
chapter, chapter 2, verse 1, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right. Verse 8, and unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, right. Now, that's another church. My God. Verse 12, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos, right, these things, saith the, he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Satan's got a seat in the church. He's heard the scripture. He's heard every sermon you've ever preached. John, he's heard every sermon. See, some churches provides him a seat. So he can quote. They just jump off. The angel said he won't, won't let you hurt your feet. How did he know that he was once an angel? How did he know? How many churches right now that they, let, they leave a seat for Satan? That's how churches split. What does Satan do? Subtract, divide. Comes to what? Steal, kill, destroy. He don't come to make sick. He comes to kill. Ah, he learned that in church. Jesus looked at him and said, it is said. Or oh, Ramana. Ooh, I love that. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. What point is that? Number one, never use the word of God for personal advantage. Number two, never associate yourself with wicked people even for the attainment of a good end. And number three, ready? Don't perform a godly act in a prideful spirit. He's trying to get Jesus to form a prideful act. Happens on the cross. The, 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 you know, the thieves say, hey, you God? Why don't you pull, us, pull yourself off the cross and pull us off too? Man, you're the man. You can do it. And he could. But he refused to perform a godly act in a prideful spirit. A lot of that happened in the healing days of 1947, 1958. I mean, for some reason, people wanted to know what the devil's name was. What's your name, devil? What street you live on in hell? Who cares about where he lives and what's his name? <laughs> Jesus said, what's your name? We are, we are legion. We are many. It was a bunch of them. And they were so stupid, they went into pigs. Had a lot of pork chop on the ground after that day, buddy. <laughs> Hog crackling. Oh, oh, oh. They shouldn't have had them pigs there. See, Satan destroyed his own self. He couldn't get nobody around Jesus, so he went in a hog. Hmm. So an animal can possess something. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Never perform a godly act in a prideful spirit. See, those three temptations, that's all he's got. Strike one, strike two, strike three, you out. It's my ball, it's my bat. I play more than nine innings, I play till I win. You see, that's why if you're believing for healing and you feel some pain, you don't deny the pain. You, don't de I, you deny it's right to exist in your body. You say, by Jesus Christ, I am healed. But the devil's trying to say, yeah, but what you feel? I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by what I believe. I don't deny what I feel. I deny it's right. People are always asking me, Denny, you probably get the same thing. Oh, but just when you going to retire? Denny, me and you can talk. You, uh, you're 81, right? I'm 73. God has given us a gift that's irrevocable. Amen. How are we going to revoke an irrevocable gift? Amen. It can't be done. No. You'll preach to the day you die or to the rapture. Amen. Doesn't make any difference. How do you revoke that? Can you slow down? I guess you can. I'd like to find out how. <laughs> See, when you understand I don't perform godly acts in the Bible spirit. I didn't mean to embarrass those two people. See, but I wanted to get your life right so it can get your liver healed. You see, you cannot compromise this book. You can't. If you do, that's performing a godly act in a prideful spirit. You can't compromise it. Compromise. You take the C-O-M off, it's promise. Compromise. C-O-M-P-R-O-M-I-S-E. You take the com, C-O-M off, it becomes promise or dot com. Call it what you want.
You can't compromise this. Well, healing is not for the day. You haven't got sick enough yet. Tongues are not for the day. You compromise on the word of God. When Jesus explicitly says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he said this, I must go away. Now, you know you'd rather have Jesus in person than the Holy Spirit. Don't lie. Think about it. Wouldn't you rather have Jesus in person in bodily form? Because the Holy Spirit's the Spirit inside of you. Jesus said, I can't stay here. I have to go because the comforter won't come. Jesus named him the comforter. How many Christians you know are, not, are, 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 are in comfort? You know about the trials and the tribulations. But you can learn stuff through. But if you just listen and don't compromise, that's what that book's about. I, I, I have no doubt. I never learned. I will not doubt. When me and Kathy got married, I said, this is it till the day we die. And we came close several times. <laughs> we never thought of divorce, but boy, we thought of murder sometimes. <laughs> Don't laugh, you did the same thing. <laughs> you know, perform a God lacked in a prideful spirit. See, some people want to film stuff just so it can make people think they got a big ministry. And let me tell you something about Satan. If he can put a sickness on you, he can take it off of you. Just to, just to fool someone. The Bible said in the last days, if it was possible, even the elect would be deceived. Well, you know, a lot of people are saying we don't have to tithe today. That stuff is to try to defund the church. How do you put God first? See, the government puts themselves first. They don't let you send your taxes. They take it out of your check because they know you. God lets you make your free choice. Well, it's under the law. It predates the law. Well, it's not in the New Testament. Go to Hebrew chapter 6 and Hebrew chapter 7 and find out. You'll find out that you... That Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek. Jesus is the high priest in the order of Melchizedek, and his priesthood is still running, so you give tithes to him. It's not about the money, it's about the obedience. Do you see what I'm saying? When you understand this, you don't perform a godly act in a prideful spirit. Three of them. And only three, that's all he got. He's not a faith devil, he's a flesh devil. He doesn't tempt you in the flesh because he's spiritually dead. He can't tempt you in the spirit. He only tempts you in the flesh. He can't, you, well, I've said it here before. Let me give you a prime example. Have you ever been tempted to tithe? <laughs> Anybody in this building never been tempted to tithe? Oh, God, man, Pastor Denny, Pastor John, you got to, you got to help me because I'm about ready to fall. I'm going to fall and start tithing. <laughs> no, why? Why can't he tempt you to tithe? Because tithing is a spiritual concept. Satan is a flesh devil. He only, that's why he told Jesus, turn the stone into bread. Showed him something he could see. Tried to get Jesus to do something he could say. Everything has to do with flesh. And God says, no, I will not do that. It is written, it is written. But if you can't get that point, I'm going to say it is said. That didn't impress Jesus when that devil started quoting scripture. See what I'm saying? The, the baby saying, tell a man to shut up and let's go home. <laughs> But see, that baby don't understand. I'm a grandfather. I can handle the crying. <laughs> now, when I was a parent, I could. Boy, if a baby start crying in the restaurant, huh? Oh. But a grand, a grand, a grandmother and a grandfather, who cares? It's normal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's better to be a grandfather than a father. Ain't nobody ever called me grand until Meredith was born. And her child going to make me great. <laughs> We're a little nervous because tomorrow night, I think she might have a little date. Oh, God. I told her, boys are no good. <laughs> the only boy you should love is me. <laughs> no. See, Jesus refused to use his power in a prideful way. They tried to get him to go to a place. He said, my time is not yet. 
No, man, you got to do this so everybody can see all the works you do. No. Mm -mm. Now, when Harry was, and, uh, they, and, and Pontius Pilate, he could have wiped out the place. The father was mad. He's splitting rocks, tearing down the <laughs> curtains. To it. He's hot, man. But Jesus said, I'll take it all the way. Let me explain something to you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You know why I believe in the Trinity? I'm not here to argue with you doctrinally. Because I have a spirit, I have a soul, and I have a body. I have a spirit housed in a soul, clothed in a body. Right? So I have a spirit voice, I have a soulish voice, and I have a body voice. Oh, and in Genesis chapter 1, I'm created in his image. So if I got a spirit voice and a soulish voice and a body voice, then God the Father has a voice, God the Son has a voice, God the Holy Ghost has a voice. They're one, yet they're three. Jesse is one, yet I'm three. See? Don't compromise this. You don't do that. So we don't perform godly acts in a prideful spirit just because we have the power to do so. Or try to associate with wicked people. Well, you know, we could use that money for the kingdom. Oh, oh. So you're going to bow down once. Oh, my God, we're so advantaged by it. Oh, you're already advantaged. And there'll always be somebody saying, you can't do that. But the Bible said, I can do all things. How many churches you've heard people say, you can't do that? Hold your hand up. Oh, yeah, no. you've heard people say, you can't do it. Come on, be honest. And that's compromise of the word of God. You see what I'm saying? He's only got three temptations. And when you understand that, it's your ball, it's your bat, it's your field. You play as long as you want and you go home. That's what I'm talking about. Are you all enjoying this little teaching? <laughs> so when you understand that, see, because I'm going to promise you, uh, Denny, I, I, I promise you, you're going to run across this tomorrow. That devil going to tell you, ain't no 30 angels coming out here. Well, certainly not for him. <laughs> you see my point? And when you understand that, you don't look down on people. You realize, and I close with it, that there's one race, the human race. And that's it. And why are we stirring that racism pot? You know what I don't like? I'm going to shock you when I say that. I don't like people to say, that lady or that man was a woman or, or, or a man of color. What? Stirring that pot. Let me show you. People say, you white. No, I'm not white. This is white. <laughs> Look at me. This is white. I'm not white. Look at me. <laughs> Why am I going to stir that? He created mankind. There's one sixteenth of an inch of pigmentation of skin. But if I cut everybody in this building and you cut me, we all bleed red. <laughs> you can use, if it's your blood type, whether it's an Asian, Hispanic, African-American, American Indian, European, Caucasian, you can use the blood of your type, it don't make no difference. My heart will work in your chest. Your lungs will work in mine, male or female, it doesn't make no difference. The body understands that perfectly because when you have to get a heart transplant or a kidney transplant, they have to give you medicine to fool the body because the body's saying, where's my original? And it'll go against that. It'll shut that down because you wasn't supposed to die. Your heart wasn't supposed to get, go bad. Your kidney wasn't supposed to go bad. Your liver wasn't supposed to go bad. You get a liver transplant, they have to give you medicine all the days of your life to fool the body. God's good. Your body knows what belongs to it. Isn't that amazing? So I stop prejudice wherever I see it. I don't care if I'm in the pulpit or outside of the pulpit, in a, in a, in a restaurant. Anyway, somebody says something, I, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you, you're stirring up something that don't need to be stirred up here. You're judging someone that does not need to be judged. We're all God's children. You know, he didn't say we're his adults. 
You know why he calls us children? Because children are born believers until you teach them to doubt. Now you grow to the fullness of the stature of Christ. I'm going to try to say this right. Kathy says sometimes I say it wrong. I've had some people say, well, you know, I'm a man trapped in a woman's body. No, you're not. But I don't feel like it. Look, if you die and they dug you up 10,000 years later and extracted your DNA, it will tell everybody you're a man. Yeah, but I don't feel that way. It don't make difference what you feel. Look around. You may not feel married, but you are. <laughs> you are. I never thought in my entire life in the United States of America that people wouldn't know what sex they are. Let me give you a word of knowledge. Look down. It's going to tell you what you are. Yeah, but I don't feel, it don't matter what you feel. You are what you are. They won't define a woman. People that you put in power. Because you voted your party instead of voting the person. Well, I got to get out of here tonight. Now I'm getting, I'm stepping on toes now, son. You see what I'm saying? You got to find out what people believe. That's what you put in office. Call it platform, call it what you want, you know. How come they'll send you to prison for killing a dog, but you can kill a baby? You know how they do that? Let me have, you know how they do that? How they desensitize, they change the name. It used to be a baby if you was pregnant. Now it's a fetus. How come it's a baby when you want it and a fetus when you don't? They changed the name. How come everybody going to Las Vegas right now? My God, it just and it used to years ago gambling. Oh God, don't do that because they changed the name from gambling to gaming. And you got people bringing their kids two o'clock in the morning. They sleeping on the couch and boy, they are just pulling no one armed bandits. They just changed the name. Oh, abortion. No, let's change the name. Woman's health. takes the pressure off. Just change the name. And all of a sudden they got you believing something you shouldn't believe. Like one lady told me, well, I am pro-choice. I said, well, I'm glad your mother wasn't. She just looked at me. I said, because if she was pro-choice, I would have never got a chance to meet you. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. You just changed the name. Watch this. You want that woman? Oh, yeah, I want that woman. You want that man? Yes. Sign the contract. Because guess what's going to happen? Your name's going to change. I had a man tell me something about two or three years ago. He said, my wife loves the way your wife dresses and has beautiful jewelry. And gosh, she got beautiful purses and shoes. And all. I said, but Jesse... What's the most expensive thing you've ever gave Sister Kathy? I said, my name. <laughs> my name. She can spend all my money if I'm not home. She is Mrs. Jessie Duplan. yet she retained her name. She still got her name, Catherine Carrere Duplantis. <laughs> yeah. Look, not one man gave you an amen. I just want you to know that. <laughs> I gave him my name. Well, when I got born again, he gave me his name. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So we shouldn't use the word of God for personal advantage because we are already advantage. We should never associate ourselves with wicked people, even for the attainment of what we want. And we never perform a godly act in a prideful spirit because we're not of that persuasion. I heard a story the other day, and you may know this, uh, Denny. Uh, A.A. Allen was preaching, and a demon started manifesting. And he just kept on preaching, you know, and everything. And finally, people said, Brother Allen, you want to go over there and cast that devil? He said, no, go over and tell that devil, A.A. Allen's in the church. Shut up. 
<laughs> the guy said, A.A. A. Allen's in the church. Shut up. And the demon said, okay. And he shut up. <laughs> That's a true story. He said, I ain't got time. I want to finish this message. Hmm. And let me tell you something. The devil know your name. Some people tried that. Paul I know. Jesus I know. Who are you? You see what I'm saying? Because they flesh. They flesh. They're only tempting. The but if you crucify your flesh daily instead of Sunday, you don't fulfill the lust of that flesh. I'll say this and I'll close. Not too long ago. You know, I can't get over it. I'm 73 years old and I still get hit on. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. That's the most amazing, stupidest thing. This prostitute, prostitute. She just, you know, I'm not mad at her. She's just trying to make a living. And I looked at her. And I said, can I ask you something? Yeah. Who told you this is all you can do? And you believed it? She just looked at me. I said, I don't doubt you're a very smart person. I don't doubt it. You can do way better than this. Who told you that this is the only thing you can do? When you're probably a very intelligent person, there's nothing you can't do, Tears. You believed it. But you didn't have to. Because when God created you, he gave you great gifts. You just need to find them. You see what I'm saying? But somebody told you, this is all you could do. And you believed it for tears. I wasn't there to criti criticize her. I wasn't there to judge her. She's just trying to make a living. Because she figured that's the only thing she can do. And she believed it when it's not true. There was a black woman, and I use the word black. I don't like saying that because I should have said the word. But it's the only way. She passed away. She was a great poet. Her name was Maya. Uh, Y'all know? At one time, she was a prostitute. Did you know that? Way back when. But she found out something that she could do a lot better than that. Someone told me that. And then I heard her talking. She said, yeah, I... When I was younger, because you know, you figured that's all you can do now. Everyone, you have great gifts. You just have to find that niche. And how do I do that? You go before the Lord and you say, You put me on this planet. Where is my destiny? Where is my destination? Holy Spirit, St. John 16, 13. Howbeit, when the Spirit of truth is come, you guide me in all truth. Guide me and I will follow. So I didn't get turned on because the prostitute was coming at me. She wasn't interested in me. She was interested in my money. <laughs> Trying to do a job. But when I told her, oh, you got talent you know not of. And you believe that lie. Instead of saying, you whore, you this and that. I didn't, I, who am I? To, I ain't judging nobody. I just let my light shine. Changes a life. You see, that's exactly what Jesus did. One woman come a day, he said, where's your husband? Well, uh, uh, he said, when you married her, you've had five of them. And when you're with nine, you ain't got, whoa, whoa, whoa. She said, I perceive you a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't condemn her. The lady was caught in the act of adultery. What about the guy? Where was the guy? He had a rock in his hand, so his wife don't find out and he's going to hit her first. He said, neither do I condemn you. But he gave her a, 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 a out. Go sin no more. Whew. Now that's grace. That's love. That's mercy. That's compassion. Hmm. Did you enjoy it tonight? Yeah. Give the Lord a hand clap. I went a little long here. Couldn't help myself. <laughs> In just a minute, we're going to receive an offering for this ministry. It's a good ministry. It really is. How many of you get my pardon letter? Anybody? Thank you. Look, Kathy. Hold your hand up. Let Kathy look. 
Look at the people. Thank you for supporting this ministry. 100% of what you give goes in the world evangelism. We don't touch it. You know why? It's not mine. Even the IRS likes me for that. Isn't that a blessing of the Lord? Yeah. We're going to ask you to give tonight because I've asked the Lord for every dollar given to our ministry to give us a soul into the kingdom. We're doing all kinds of different things. Ladies and gentlemen, especially on our website and especially on our social media, since January 20, January 2020 to the end of Ju July 2022, we've had 42 million 500 and something thousand people contact us. You heard me right. <laughs> Working 24 seven to service that. I want people touched. And the reason why, because of Matthew 24, 14, when this gospel is preached to the world, the end shall come. So I'm going to ask you to do your best. Uh, ushers, would you pass out those offering envelopes? Uh, or if yeah, would you mind? This is a Jesse the Planet's ministry offering envelope. I ask you to take one if you'll pass them out. And if you look at me, you can do two things at one time. If you're writing a check out, don't make it out to me. Make it out to JDM, Jesse the Planet's ministry. You'll get a tax deductible receipt for your giving. Look at me, look at me. Maybe you give, give them an offering envelope if they want one. Maybe you want to use PayPal. Or you can do that too. Or if you want to go to our website, jdm.org, hit the donate button, select the, and then do whatever you want to do. Or you can just write an old fashioned check and just mail it. Just what, or you can use our, our online mobile app. I believe that's right, huh, Kathy? Online mobile app. I think, is that right? Oh, there it is up here. I didn't know all that. This is it right here. Uh, I don't even know how to do this. You see that, that little square white thing? That's speaking in tongues to me. I don't know what that is. I ask you to do your best. Look at me. Look at me. Don't give me anything that belongs to this great church. God's not going to hurt John or Denny to help me. We're on the same team. I just ask you to do your best. Don't get mad at me when you get to heaven. There'll be thousands of people in your front yard. You give me $1,000, I get 1,000 people saying, what is today? Today's Thursday. I'll have them by Thursday next week. I'll do it through the online and I'll do it all. Man, I am preaching nonstop. I'm going home tonight and then I start off, boy, here we go again. I mean, just uh, every night. Going, going, going. Why? Reaching people, changing lives one soul at a time. You notice what I did that night, floating the Holy Ghost first before I did any preaching. And if he'd have told me not to preach, I'd have just dismissed. I'm going to do what God says. You know why Jesus was su successful? He said, I only say what my father says, and I only do what my father says to do. Right. Jesse the Planet does the same thing. I only say what my father says, and I only do what my father says to do. Amen. So I ask you to do your best. And if you want to, you're writing out a check, make it out to JDM. Or if you want to text to give, you can do that, a one-time donation. And it's, it's on that envelope. Or a recurring one if you want. Or you can use the online mobile app. Or you can use PayPal. Or you can go to JDM website and do it that way. Just whatever you want to do. 100% of what you're giving going into world evangelism. I've been coming here, I believe this is my 27th time or something like that, and I've never charged any. I never charge churches. I pay all my own expenses. How much it cost to fly that jet? I don't know. <laughs> Why? It's not my job. He didn't ask me to pay for it. He asked me to believe for it. So I will take care of that. I will take care of that. I want what you give 100% to go into world evangelism. I had a lady said, I gave you $10,000. Did you get $10,000? Yeah. Yeah. I had a lady say, I gave you a million. I said, I'll have it by the end of the month. I called her up and showed her that we got it. Got a million people touched. It's true. Hold your offering up. Oh, no, you're, we do it different here. Y'all have baskets, right? I don't think these are Easter baskets, I don't think, right? So get out of your seat right now and walk and put your seed in the baskets real quickly. And I'll still keep doing a little talking a little bit while you're doing that. Thank you for giving to this ministry. Thank you, partners, because we couldn't do it without you. Did you enjoy it tonight, sweetheart? Thank you. What a blessing of God. Hallelujah. I appreciate all the men help. Sir, did you enjoy it tonight? Thank you, sir. What a blessing. Thank you, sweetheart. What a blessing of God. Hallelujah. Look at all this, man. My Lord. Now, I, you know, Kathy, look at this, Kathy. I mean, they, they, they have people bring it up like this. That's a blessing. Praise the Lord. That's a lot. Praise God. When, they all, when you're all finished doing that, then if they can take that, and my pilots are in the back, and you can give it to them, they'll take care of it. I don't even touch the money in any way, shape, or form. Ooh, God is good.
The Lord is good. Thank you, sir. Remember, you got a marriage to do. I'm telling you. You notice I won't compromise. I don't care if I'm in church or not. Church. Uh, I want you to have a new liver. I want you to have everything. Yes, ma'am. You want to shake my head? Yes. How you doing, sweetheart? Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, my man. You're going to be all right. I'm telling you. God bless you, sweetheart. Thank you. Hallelujah. Isn't this good? Please go back to your seat real quick after you give your offering. Thank you, sir, for doing that. That's so kind of you. Thank you, sweetheart. Look at that you little young lady. Thank you for doing that. God bless you, sweetheart. What a blessing of the Lord. Did I see y'all last year? I thought so. I remembered your faces. You've grown. Good. How old are you now? How old? Ten? I used to be ten. I know you laugh. It can't be. It just can't be. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for giving to this wonderful ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been debt free since 1982. We have no concept of debt whatsoever at all. As you're going back to your seat, they were driving, and just a minute after it's all over, I'm going to turn it over to John, and then they'll take us back to the airport. When we were driving in, I like Muncie. I like, you know, driving downtown, because I remember when I was a kid, there were no malls. There were no shopping centers. Everybody shopped downtown. Anybody remember that? You went downtown, and you walked down, there, and I thought, God, look at this. That's how it was. You know, the stores were there, whatever, little, little places to eat and things of that nature. Beautiful town. It's a blessing of the Lord. We were flying in. I said, Kathy, look how green Muncie is. But when you're up high, it's green. Man, I mean, soybeans and corn and just green. Man, y'all could feed the world out here. And you come driving in, there, there's Chief Muncie on a bronze horse. <laughs> then you get to the end of the town, this horse got old and turned green. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, he turned green, you know. And so John and Denny gave me a little, uh, little historical report. I like all that stuff. Thank you for letting me speak today. I don't mean to be rude. I'd love to hang out with you. But I have to, I have to head out. I, we're about to follow this video. And Kathy, I thank you for coming tonight. I really appreciate that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a blessing. I married her 52 years ago. 52 years. I knew I've known her for 54 years. I'm smiling, I'm smiling. I'm smiling. She's going to turn 70 years old August the 30th. She don't look no 70 years old, does she? I know I do, but I don't care. I know my skin's loose, look, this way. But I don't really care. As long as I can still button my coat, I'm all right. Praise God. I love you. Would you stand to your feet real quickly? Thank you for letting me speak a word to you. Thank you, partners, for helping me. All these things. 46 years of preaching. Never have had a financial deficit. Didn't believe for it. You want, you want to know a story about the COVID? 2020, nobody knew what the COVID was. I was in Honolulu, Hawaii in March of 2020. And these people said, you got to meet these wonderful Chinese people. They love you. And I'm hugging Chinese pastors, and they were all from Wuhan. <laughs> and I got back home, and, and toward the end of March, I, I developed a cough, <laughs> but nobody knew what it was. Felt like glue. <clears throat> what is this? I guess it, I never did get a test. Nobody knew anything about that. It didn't stop me. I just kept going. And somebody came in, you probably had the COVID. I said, well, the word had is, I don't know, didn't make any difference. I'm still here. <laughs> Every day above ground is a good day. <laughs> it is. Hallelujah. I like what Pastor Denny was saying. Everybody worshiping, praising. Denny said, I'm going to sit down. And he sat down. And I sat with you too, brother. I said, okay, glory to God. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Thank you. A lot. And thank you. Do you enjoy us coming to Muncie? Yeah. Thank you. I really love Denny and John and bless them. But what I love about this tabernacle, I feel the presence of great ministers here that walked down these aisles and stood on these platforms way back when. Memories. I tell it to my granddaughter all the time. I said, hey, let's go somewhere and make memories. 
She said, yeah, Grandfather, let's do that. So we'll go to the mall or we'll go to a restaurant. She likes a certain place. So we just go. And she never tells me, can I have that? I said, just get what you want. And she does. <laughs> the other day I wanted to buy her something. She says, I have my own money. I know, I gave it to you. I didn't tell her that, but I knew. <laughs> and you know what? Instead of me paying for it, she just wanted to pay for it herself. Your legs are going to be fine. You feel anything, you rebuke that in Jesus' name. Use me as an example. But Jesse ain't got no pain in his legs. Why should I? Use me as an example. Hallelujah. And God will honor you. Keep standing and give Jesus a hand clap as Pastor John comes. This I, uh, look at me and John. You don't think we were in the Holy Ghost? Yes. <laughs> I wish I was tall as John. <laughs> Give him another hand clap. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's so good. Did you have it? You enjoyed it tonight. Amen. Did, did the Holy Spirit speak to your heart? You know, he spoke to every person tonight. He spoke to all of you. He ministered to you. And I'm going to tell you what, God, when, when Brother Jesse laid hands on you, there was an anointing that was transmitted to you. Now you have to do what the Lord has told you to do before everything else. And you'll watch everything line up once you do that, once you do what, what the admonition of the Lord was. Amen? Amen. To everybody, you, how many have received your healing tonight? You've been healed, set free. Now I'm going to tell you right now, right where you are, if there's anyone in this place who does not know Jesus Christ, you're not sure where you're going to heaven. Listen, heaven's coming soon whether you like it or not. I like it. I'm ready for heaven. I, 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 can't, I want us all to go together. And if you're not ready for heaven, whether you're watching online or whether you're here, I want us all to just lift our hands to the Lord. And I want us all to just pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I call upon you to forgive me of my sins. Yes. I confess them to you, Lord. And I receive Jesus Christ. I want my home to be in heaven. And Father, I accept you now. And I thank you for your grace and for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord another good praise. If you prayed that prayer, whether there or here, then by the authority of God's word, you are now a child of God and your home is in heaven. If he came right now, you would go. Amen. So let the light of God shine. Thank you, dear brother, for helping. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, as, your, as my dear friends and, and these wonderful, beautiful people, as they go home, bless them, keep them. Father, take them into their home churches. Bring them back into this church or their home churches, wherever they go. And bless them, Father. And their anoint, your anointing goes with them in Jesus' name. And we say amen together. God bless you. We love you. Shake somebody's hand, okay? God bless you. We'll see you. Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Oh, soon and very soon We are going to see the King Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Hallelujah, hallelujah We're going to see the King There'll be no sickness there Cause we are going to see the King Oh, there'll be no sickness there
street.